So if a compound has one chiral center, it is chiral overall, and it will exist as a pair of enantiomers, one having R configuration, the other having S. But if a compound has two or more chiral centers, we're going to have to analyze a little bit further to tell if a molecule is chiral or achiral overall. So let's take a look at something like this. We have two chiral centers here, right, because each of these carbons is connected to four different groups. For example, a chlorine, the implied hydrogen, and then two different carbon chains around each side because in this direction there's a chlorine atom that is not present on that direction, so those are different groups. Now, if we reflect this across a mirror plane, this is what we're going to get. And then if we rotate this 180 degrees in the plane of the board to try to be able to place it back on the original, we are going to see that it is not going to work. This is not going to fit because a dash chlorine will be on a wedge and a wedge chlorine will be on a dash. Therefore, these are non-superposable mirror images. They are enantiomers one of one another. Therefore, this molecule is chiral. But what if we do something as simple as just changing this dash to this wedge? Now, what we're going to see is if we, wrote, if we uh, reflect across the mirror plane, this is what we're going to get. We turn this 180 degrees and we find that this is flawlessly superposable. So the mirror image is identical to the original. Therefore, by definition, this is achiral or not chiral. However, it does still have two chiral centers, and you ought to be able to assign absolute configuration to these two chiral centers. So this means that it can be possible for a molecule to have two or more chiral centers with their own absolute configurations, but be achiral overall. And in fact, there are special terms to designate why, and in this case, it is because this is something called a meso compound. A meso compound is a compound that has an internal plane of symmetry. What that means is because the top half of this molecule, when reflected across this central line or plane, does in fact give uh, accurately the other half of the molecule, that means that this is a plane of symmetry. Therefore, it is a meso compound, and any meso compound is achiral or not chiral. So if you want to see whether a molecule with two or more chiral centers is chiral overall or not, you can either examine for any uh, kind of planes of symmetry, or as always, you can simply go ahead and reflect across the mirror plane, see what you get, and then uh, investigate as to whether the result can be uh, superposable on the original. So there's another kind of internal symmetry that will allow for a molecule with multiple chiral centers to be achiral overall. It's a little bit different from a meso compound because it's not a plane of symmetry, it's actually more like a point of symmetry called an inversion center. So let's take a look at what this is doing. Um, so if you reflect every atom in the molecule across the inversion center at the center of the molecule, this is what happens. So A will see A, on the other side of the molecule, those are both in the plane of the board. Now B here is extending out of the board, and that is going to go through the center to the dashed B on the other side, right? So that's passing through the center and through the board onto the other side. And then likewise, the C that is coming from the other side past the board will travel through the center and then to the C on the wedge over here. So if it is the case that every atom in the molecule can be reflected across an inversion center and see itself on the other side, that molecule has an inversion center and is therefore achiral overall or not chiral, even though there could be, just as in this case, two chiral centers. So there's another stereoisomeric relationship that we need to be aware of, and that is that of diastereomers. Diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not specifically enantiomers. In other words, they are molecules that are stereoisomers of one another, but they're not specifically mirror images of each other. So let's take a look at a molecule that has two chiral centers. So here we have an R and we have an S. 
Now, we know very well that if we take the mirror image of that, that we're going to get the enantiomer. So that would be this, and at home if you want, you can go ahead and draw this across the mirror plane and then flip it over and you will see that you would get the same groups, but now those would be on the dash bonds. When you take the mirror image of something, or if you're drawing the enantiomer of a molecule, it is essentially the inversion of every stereocenter. So, whereas this is R and S, this is S and R. So these are enantiomers because they have precisely uh, the inversion of each chiral center. Now, a diastereomer of this molecule would be one in which one, but not both, of the stereocenters are inverted. So down here, if we swap the uh, wedged hydroxyl for a dash, we're going to get a different stereoisomer because these are not the same molecule. They differ in how they are oriented in three-dimensional space. But they are not specifically mirror images of each other. They do not have a mirror image relationship, so they cannot be enantiomers of one another. So that's what diastereomers are. These are, a diast these are different diastereomeric relationships because they are stereoisomers of one another, but not specifically the mirror image. So, Basically, what we want to understand is that any molecule, no matter how many stereocenters it has, let's say there's a compound with 10 chiral centers, that means it could have many, many, many different diastereomers because if you invert only one or two or three or four or up to nine uh, of those stereocenters in any combination you can think of, you would generate a different diastereomer of that molecule. However, there can only be one enantiomer of any given molecule because it is specifically the mirror image of that molecule or the molecule in which every single one of those chiral centers is inverted to the opposite absolute configuration. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and as always feel free to email me with questions professordaveexplains at gmail.com.